Uh, back. Yeah. Back with another freaking video, man. Back with yeah. another freaking video. You bring you another one trillion ones. Man, you already know what it is. Right now, I got Snapple back with me. Snapper's back full time with a little bit of part time. Justin May comes in, but Snapper's here. Ain't that right? That's right, guys. Yep, it's getting better and better every day. And uh, my talk time is just about two hours or so. So it's been on and off today. So I'm good. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. So y'all know, right? I got two infamous against the grain individuals. I'm gonna say that because they're considered to be against the grain of what the black culture say you should be. Mm -hmm. um, and as I'm realizing more and more in this world, um, you wanna probably go the opposite of what everybody say you should be. Because the way everybody might be going ain't, might, ain't it. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you have not done your own research and your exactly. own work. You know, it's confirmation bias where people will see somebody else doing something and then they need the confirmation they're going to do yeah. it too. Even if it's y'all, all y'all going down, going to roll off a cliff, you don't know where they're going. You just going to follow them. Follow right behind them. Yeah. Just like you said, how it is when you go up, let's say you go up, you go to the post office. Let's No, let's say you go to a store. And it's a line that just ain't making no sense, but everybody keep piling up in that line. Mm -hmm. And to that one person say, why are everybody over here? And they just go right here. They go right to the front because yeah. everybody piled up I on, in an unnecessary line. Oh, no, you day. didn't. Yeah, it was one person there, nobody there, and all these people in that line. So I just walked by and I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm next. <laughs> and then what do people do? They just like get behind say? you. No, yeah. Other That's people what you usually have. Over, but I mean, what can you say? You were the dodo bird still standing in the line but what does that make you think of? it makes you think of sheep that's what it makes me think of. i mean but that's just i, I mean i know that to be true about yeah. people yeah. you know talk about it in um, social psychology all the time yeah. but it is what it is because because that's what that's what god said my sheep hear my voice so that means so what is a sheep you're gonna follow yeah. so but anyway man so charleston white joins jesse lee peterson so i want to really hear this this is like an hour segment. We're gonna break this up into parts. You like that? You get on long sleeves? I don't know. I just ran. I just felt like putting it on. It's gonna burn up. I ain't gonna. I got the fan right here, G. Okay. I just realized you had a long sleeve. I just realized what? that you have brown eyes. All right, let's get it, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, these waist are on. Put your headphones on. See, you did what okay, I Okay, I'm about to call <laughs> Jessie May. Don't <laughs> make me call her Mexico. She'll be back, y'all, this week. I thought she was going to be here today, but she got caught up. Oh, Lord. You ready? Yes. Uniting the race with truth instead of dive, dividing them with lies. Alpha male. And by the way, like I remember, like so, just on a side note, it was just so interesting listening to Jesse Peterson's um, story. Like I didn't know his story; I just kept hearing everything in time without other people with the words they would say because they didn't like his choice on things. But if you hear his story, his story kind of be like, oh. I see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you watch that with me, you remember. Listen, hold on. You speaking from a stadium way up there in the stands trying to dictate to the players down on the field. You spinning the bullshit narrative, Mr. Peterson. Most so, game, most, listen, I'm, you, trying to, you trying to spin a narrative of children join games, not grown adults with fully functional developed brains. No kid is saying, hey, I'm joining the gang because I'm looking for daddy. It's the attributes that the gang have available for the kid that replaces what the father didn't get in the, don't provide in the home. So don't spin that narrative, homie. Well, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be quite interesting. Quite interesting. That's indubitably. the one that was, got into it with Soldier Boy, right? Yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ground, 
Welcome to The Fall of State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. The Fall of State is on Patreon. Click the Patreon link to support our work. And thank you, folks. I have with me today Charleston White. He is the founder and CEO of Hype, which stands for Helping Young People Excel. Charleston, thanks so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, man. Uh, Charleston, what's important to you? Uh, the future, uh, which uh, ultimately, to me, uh, is... And FYI, just like they said on the, on the video, viewer discretion and the vibes, I'm sure there might be some colorful language, but we're going to keep on pushing on through. Okay. Our children. Uh, I believe our children are 100% of our future. Uh, and, and so that's what matters the most to me. And, and why do you believe that the children are the future? Uh, I was once a child. And, and, and I, I grew up because people believe what I believe. And so there was people who poured into me as a child. And so uh, I grew up to make a difference in the future uh, when I was a kid, right? So what I'm doing now today, uh, I was groomed for it. I was uh, prepared to do what I'm doing. Uh, I had people who was juvenile workers, who was youth workers, who was counselors, who was uh, juvenile probation officers uh, who was uh, teachers who deal with, with, with the troubled students at school. And so uh, they took time uh, to not cast me away or, or throw me away, uh, but to nurture the gifts that they saw in me, to pull out the good. Uh, even though I couldn't see it at the time, even though I didn't understand what they were doing, they were preparing me for the future, where I am today. And so uh, I, I believe... Uh, if we want to reshape America, uh, I believe if, if we want to make America great again, uh, we have to go back to uh, creating strong children uh, like we once used to do. So. And how um, I can say and attest to that, that I totally agree. Um, I totally agree. If you don't have the strength of the youth that's coming up, what kind of new foundation are we going to create? All you have is the people that are already here and set their foundation. But some of that foundation don't, a lot of foundation don't apply to the to Generation Z, to Gen Z. Some of a lot of the things that apply to us that we might value don't, they don't value that there. I believe the children are our future. <laughs> we don't wear them and we go away. That's what I was hearing in my mind when he was saying that. But of course, most definitely. Yeah, for sure. How are you helping them? What do you do to help young, young people at sale? What do you do? Uh, I, I create youth, youth development programs, youth engagement programs. Uh, I have anti-gang cognitive uh, intervention programs that I've taught at alternative schools that I teach inside the juvenile facilities. Uh, I also, at one point in time, would train the state's juvenile correctional officers who was employed with the Texas Juvenile Justice Department. And then I, um, I, I work with the public defender's office and, 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 and partner with, with criminal defense mitigation specialists on some time helping young people uh, who, who've committed capital murder or murder. Mm -hmm. uh, and I come in and I help uh, explain the mitigating factors or the mitigating circumstances uh, that would deem uh, this child or this young person to be given a second chance in life. Oh, I see. What, um, so were you raised by both parents? Were both parents in your home growing up? No, no, sir. I, I'm the product of, of what I like to call uh, the, the, the typical uh, traditional uh, <laughs> African American uh, uh, home, uh, the single parent home, right? Yeah. Uh, Seventy-three percent, seventy-three percent of African American homes in, in this household are headed by single black mothers, and so. And on a pause note, um, politically, they probably are gonna, they politically, almost, I, I feel that they are the same political choice. You okay. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but James, I, I get the feeling. Mr. Peterson gonna be at a little. He gonna he might get a little bit uh, a little bit judgy in a second, but um, let's see. Uh, I'm the product of that, right? I'm the product of a of a mother who was a teenage mother, but she had the ambition, she had the the wherewithal, she had the tenacity uh, to wheel herself out of impoverished conditions uh, and raise her two boys uh, in, in in what I would like to say uh, the backbone of America, which is that that middle class. Uh, uh, upbringing, that middle-class lifestyle. Uh, so my mother landed a job at, at, at General Motors 
yeah. in the early, early 80s. Yeah. And, and I can vividly uh, remember our lives uh, changing from uh, living in an apartment complex to having a, a home uh, and, yeah. and me and my brother having our own rooms yeah. uh, uh, and, and living uh, what I like to say uh, a, a, a pretty productive life. A, a mother who, who was God-fearing, uh, who tried to instill good morals and good values uh, in, in two or two boys. But back okay. during that time, uh, and I was born in 77, so the 80s, there was somewhat of a stigma uh, to single mothers, and then there was, uh, yeah. was not a lot of help. Yeah. Uh, about, four about single 42, mothers, 43. and so my mother was the backbone of, of our family. My my grandfather is is a military guy who who migrated out of East Texas uh, to Fort Worth, Texas, by way of the Air Force. He's the oldest of of seventeen children. His mother is a see. I didn't know nowhere near this information. That you only see when he do some some wild, so you never really hear all the the backbone. You know, what I'm I don't know. He he could have a whole conversation like this because when I've heard him it's been way different yeah yeah it, I exactly yeah. you think you th you're you thinking just like me I'm like whoa okay okay there's a lady by the name of Lucille Helton uh she was a slave she was the property of the white Sloan plantation and so that's where we get our last name from my father's name was Freddie White he joined the Air Force came to Fort Worth and, and most of his brothers migrated to Fort Worth when you say that he met my brother when you say Go your ahead. mother was a God-fearing woman, what does that mean? Uh, I, I I've never seen a man come out of come out of my mother's bedroom, uh, and, and and she had she had boyfriends. Uh, we went to church on on Sundays. Uh, we was taught to pray at night before we went to bed. Uh, we was taught to pray over our food. Uh, I've never heard my mother say anything bad about my father. Uh, I've never heard my mother cuss anyone out. Uh, so. What I believe, my mother taught us to fear God and fear her as well as well yeah, as respect right. her. But she tried to instill biblical principles in, into us at, a, at an early age in life. I just, that's, wow. I mean, that just really blows me in a positive way. I mean, that, you know, that he's saying this because I, based on his character that he um, portrays, portrays on YouTube, I, I thought he was a girl joke. Buck Wild household. Yeah. So he was that one that grew up. You know, you had you have all the luxury and jewels, but then I'm gonna cut up in the street, even though I have it all. I choose. I choose. Yeah, I choose. Life. So, uh, as far back as I can remember in my life, we had a foundation of, of, of biblical principles. Uh, Did you have any relationship with your father growing up? Uh, no, no, sir, I didn't. No uh, contact my, my father, at all. Oh uh, yeah, uh, my dad. My dad was in the Navy. Uh, my dad. My dad retired from the Navy. And, and, and battle with mental illness. Uh, and so I very, I probably can count on, on, on two hands how many times I've seen my father in my lifetime. So what was it like for you not seeing him and being with him growing up? Did you yearn for him or what was it like? Uh, our, 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 our children, uh, especially boys and girls, uh, you know, yearn for their father. There's, yeah. a, there's a strong desire. Yeah. Uh, uh, not having a father there, right? And, 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 and your mother not having the words or, or, the, the, or the understanding or maybe the time uh, to explain to you uh, what it's like to not have a father, right? So most single mothers are working. Uh, I don't know what it's like to be hungry. Mm. Uh, I don't know what it's like to come home and have our lights cut off. Yeah. So my mother was very financially uh, responsible, and, and, and at some point we we we, we made it to a, a level of affluence, but not having your father there, as a kid, not being able to articulate it, you internalize, yeah. right? So when when, yeah. when the parents get divorced, kids typically blame themselves. Yeah. So as a kid, you have questions: uh, Where's my dad? Uh, why is my dad not here? Mm -hmm. uh, you may have a neighbor. Uh, I had a Hispanic guy by the name of Brian Alanese. Uh, Brian Alanese had a had a father, so I, <clears throat> I spent the night at, at, at Brian's house. Uh, spending the night at Brian's house gave me a dad at times, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, you get to see what a family structure looked like. Then when you go home, you have questions. Uh, yeah. You have internal thoughts. That was me. So as a kid growing up, mom working. So when I'm getting out of school, mom's going to work. You feel unloved, mm -hmm. right? You feel rejected 
then that turns into hurt. So there's a pain that that just simply revolves around the fact of a father being absent. Mm -hmm. And that he just saying the key, the key, the key to a lot of negative things, uh, disbelief in God, um, a key to a lot of problematic things usually results from at one point pain from somebody particular and then for some reason it sprouts and turns to something totally different yeah that this kid is feeling right he can't articulate it right no one's sitting him down and he's not going through counseling so that's where the behavior begins to transpire right, right? so you're, you're feeling unloved you're feeling abandoned you're feeling rejected uh, that hurt begins to turn into anger, but the anger is just a smoke screen, yeah. right? You really want, so, so as a young man, I got all these emotions uh, inside of me. And so when I get to school, I got the, the PE coach, I got the math teacher, or I got the school police officer. Mm -hmm. When he confronts me, hey, young man, you need to pull your pants up. Well, all these emotions causes me to resent him. Yeah, so I got yeah. this displaced anger, right? He's done nothing to me, but he's a man. He's a male authority figure, and I want him to come home with me. Yeah. I wish he can come home with me. Mm -hmm. So I resent you telling me what to do, trying to correct me, and you can't come home with me. Mm -hmm. So I begin to hate you, and I begin to despise other men, other male authority figures, mainly other black men. So right? when you so were... When you were asked your mother, where is my father? What would she say? I never thought to ask. You never asked uh, at all? Oh, uh, I never thought to ask because what's not there, you don't know to ask that. It's normal, yeah. right? You, 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 back, we come up in a generation where children don't ask questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we come up in a generation where kids don't ask grown folk questions about yeah. grown folk things. True. And that was one of those things that was true. That was a bad thing. That was not cool. That was an old mindset that that I'm happy that is that has starting to wash out with the generations. Mm -hmm. Because what that leaves is that lets you go find out stuff on your own. Whereas your household, you could get questions answered when you don't have to go dig and track and try. True. Yeah. Right. I I mean I feel like com communication is always a better is like the best thing, especially when, you know, dealing with, with children it's, and there's not, you know, if whatever the questions are, and, you know, talk to, the, talk to your kid about it. Yeah. Even if it's something that you feel is inappropriate, talk to him, explain to him why you feel it's inappropriate and why you may not want to respond to the question, but just don't, not because I don't, you know, I said so. Yeah. That's, that's not it. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. I would rather, I'd rather that child um, we have that conversation, whatever that is. Yep. Now, then you having that with your friends or whatever that is later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just, read that you, just, you you ended up being becoming a part of a gang when you were younger. What made uh, you? I don't, go ahead. What uh, What made you get involved with gangs? Uh, what made you get involved with them? Uh, it was everything I was looking for, uh, coming from a single parent home, never being, never been spanked by a man, uh, never been disciplined by a man, uh, never been uh, corrected by a man, uh, never been hugged by a man, uh, never had a man say I'm proud of you, never heard a man say I love you. So uh, the the older guys in the game uh, gave me the affirmation uh, that I sought to have from a father figure. Did you know uh, at so, the time you were doing it because you were looking for the love of a father? No, no, no. Uh, you, you, you. Man, who gonna be thinking like that, Jesse? Folks don't know the thing. Man, I ain't got my father in my life, so I'm about to bail out. You don't know why you're doing that. You ha you can't put your finger on it into your mind. Your mind can't rationalize into that yet. <laughs> it's too early, Just They too early in the mindset. <laughs> Nobody know that's what that is. Okay, he may have been an exception to the rule. I grew up, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. My stepdad was was there, but I grew up. I I I, I hated my real dad because I just like people. You know, you see people have their dad come and support them, especially when they're in sports. And 
I, I grew up, I grew up hating my, hating my, you know, mm -hmm. when I was younger. You, you 